with a sort of hypoplastic uh, aortic arch. So it's very common association. And what you, what you worry is that you see that is often the the actual um, aorta is a little bit small, and so what will become the um, pulmonary you know, the pulmonary artery might be a little bit small too. So you have to just be wary of that. That's as far as we go, isn't it? Yeah, so, yeah. So, uh, and the VSD is 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 usually is it, you know is is kind of you know described as subpulmonary in that the you know the the, the nature of the the DORV is that the pulmonary artery is kind of closest to the ventricular septum. So you have to sort of work out, you know, what is the best way of committing the VSD through to the great vessels, and usually it means an arterial switch to bring the aorta closest to the VSD, um, and then uh, the, and the VSD itself is, is usually perimembranous, uh, but it can be muscular outlet. Um, but it's just trying to work out your best access to it, and so you know, the first thing I guess in a you know in a model in a, in a case like this is is you know, as you look. You open the right atrium and you look to see if you can get a reasonable assessment of the tricuspid valve. Sorry, the VSD looking through the tricuspid valve at least gives you an idea. Yeah. And I think it's a bit stiff, this model, which doesn't help. And you can just see the VSD there. So you, you, you're just seeing the VSD, so you can see it's mm -hmm. perimembranous to an extent. But certainly in this model, trying to retract the, the, the um, tricuspid valve enough to mm -hmm. see the outflow chaps is quite difficult. I think the only way I can really display it is by doing a ventriculotomy, which may well be what you'd have to do anyway. Yeah. So say you, you you'd be looking, you know, to uh, let's see if we can get in there. And I need a knife. Really. We, we, yeah, probably, we, we, it's okay. We can get in. <coughs> yeah. So then, sort of ventriculotomy. You, you know, you start. You make sure you have a feeling where the where the valve is. You know where how deep it comes down. You start well below it, so you don't end up inadvertently damaging the valve. And you can look up inside. You're looking for the leaflets of the valve. Yeah, yeah. And we can, so we can come a little bit further up. And immediately, you know, I think you can see that we, you're getting a much better appreciation of the VSD, which is down here. Yeah. So, so and again, I want to cheat. I think that would normally be certainly all you would need in terms of ventriculotomy. Let's just make it a little bit bigger today, so we can mm -hmm. see easily in this stiff model. Yep. So you have a look down. You really, you often need to just, just take a few minutes with a tau sig being, or a, you know, with a difficult heart to sort out where everything is. Yeah. So often you, you know, you can put a, a probe. I can't, I can't get, yeah, through the. Cheek. So that's that. There, there my scissors there are through the tricuspid oh. valve. So you're just being sure you understand in your own mind where everything is. So there's it. That's looking through your tricuspid valve. Here's the VSD down in there. Obviously, here's the aorta, very anterior. As, as we said, yeah, the, the aorta is the furthest away from the septum down here. And then, as you look up, there's the pulmonary valve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, if you're not sure, it's just you, know, you can take your time, pass the instrument into it. There's my scissors inside the pulmonary valve, so you can see where you want to be and so you then have a you know, have a good look at there's the, there's the there's the vsd how are you going to commit things well there's a nice ridge at the top that's easy in terms of but your vsd patch is going to have to come around here up onto this ridge and then down here the most difficult bit is here on the far side yeah because it's quite a long way away from me so i'm using i'm actually pushing in from the outside to see the, imagining the pathway of my VSD patch, so that's there's the lower rim of the of the VSD. We're going to have to come around here, up around the top onto that ridge, and then dropping back onto the tricuspid valve here. So here's your tricuspid valve leaflet. So your conduction is going to be here, yeah, because it's a perimembranous VSD. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're going to have to drop away from the conduction. And I say, is that I I tend to be a bit old-fashioned and do VSDs interrupted. And you can see it would be a lot of sutures to do this. It's a long, long journey. But even mm. so, I'd still feel safer doing it with interrupted sutures so it's a bit more secure. Mm. I say it's this far, it's this lateral, the far distant side where it's more difficult to see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And so you just have to take your time, make sure you really understand where everything is. Some stay sutures on here just to sort of help you think. But, you know, and it, but certainly, you know, you may not need to do a ventriculotomy. <laughs> In assessing of the tau sig being always, sometimes you get quite a good view through the tricuspid valve. 
That's okay, you can keep that. Yeah, tell another stay or not, yeah. So, what should we do? Do you want to, um, shall we do the, v so I'll do the VSD and then we can stop and then you can all kind of have, go, go for the VSD yourselves, yeah? But again, often, you know, and if you have to, just, it may take you 10, 15 minutes just to really be comfortable that you know where everything is, but there's nothing worse than starting mm -hmm. and then realising halfway through you're actually not quite sure where the vessels all are. So really take your time and work out where things are. So here's the tricuspid valve leaflets, yeah, in there, you see them, yeah. Here's your VSD, here's your pulmonary valve, and again, it, it's going to actually help me to push on from the outside to see that lateral wall of the VSD, as it were, to come up to come up through to the pulmonary valve, yeah. So we've got a little patch, yeah, so often, you know, the patch is quite big, you have to make, reasonably straight run. Uh, onto that from the, from that VSD up, up around the pulmonary valve. It's not too bad, so I think I'd be happy with a little. Patch. But often you, know, you make your patch quite big. Um, yeah, I'd probably use Burbank or, or a Gore-Tex. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So again, probably yeah. is safe I enough to you're... start on the far side mm -hmm. there. You should be well enough away from the conduction there. Mm -hmm. Would you do it a similar way, Osama? You think? Well, not sure. I, I never actually did that when starting. No, fair enough. Oh. Well, no, you, and I said, yeah, yeah, well, you, that, you, just, uh, you may not even. Yeah, but I think certainly on this model, you, you haven't got it. You've got to really. I think. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But you can certainly see much better. It gives you quite a good view. It's 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 making sure you get around the conduction safely is one important thing when you when you're not used to doing it from a ventriculotomy. It can give you a good good view. Start almost First. on the opposite side, yeah. I'm going to work mm -hmm. at that difficult bit, which is coming up the lateral wall. Mm -hmm. if I can, and again, almost sort of pushing it in towards me. Helps, I think. It's 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 awkward. So fine. I'm just going to I'm going to take the patch from you, put it put it there. That's why often I feel putting in the sutures first, mm -hmm. and then coming at it later is almost easier. And again, works. I'm working at this lateral wall. Okay, so I think probably. Yeah. And it's just put. Yeah. So if you push in, that's it. They're not quite so much, right? That's it. I'm, I'm just trying to come up. I'm working up that lateral wall. So very easy to leave a VSD out here laterally. If you don't get, if you don't follow that line, and once you get up onto the ridge, you'll be fine. And it may be that even if you're not a fan of interrupted, what you could do is just do this bit with interrupted, and then run the rest of it once you've done the difficult bit. Yeah, you were really running here on here. No, I would always do interrupted. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's. difficult bit, I think, there. Yeah. Again, I just sort of said push to make sure you can see into that corner. That's it. And now I'm up, I'm up onto the ridge now, I think. Yeah. Not doing enough all sets. Okay, let's 
can, can you see, I don't know how well it projects on the film, but you can you see that's, so I've come up that awkward, difficult far side and now up onto that ridge. Yeah. Can you use this ridge for the bat? Yeah, and that's coming. Yeah, and so I can even cheat a bit there to change direction. Okay, so easy now, this bit. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stop here. Okay, so just put all of a shot of oh, a bit of quick clip out. It'll clip it. Take the other half. So now I'm going to come back around here, which is it's not so difficult because at least you've got a better view. You straight mm -hmm. down onto it, but you're going to start to come onto the conduction tissue, yeah. Mm -hmm. So straight away, I mean the the conduction's down. We're probably okay for a minute. Mm -hmm. I can come one more. Okay, but then we're going to have to start thinking about stepping off the edge because of the conduction. Okay, so again, let's just have a look. So and here's tricuspid valve here. So we'll sort of step away from the edge. So it's nice, also, I think in bay it's quite nice to have half circle needles rather than mm -hmm. three eighth needles if you can get them. <coughs> but I don't think Ethicon make a half circle six so. I've looked. But again, you see, I'm off. I've stepped away from the edge, yeah. Mm -hmm. The VSD here. Okay. Yeah, here's my. I'm picking up the tricuspid valve leaflet. patch and thinking how much I need to trim it. But you're glad you've made your patch bigger rather than smaller at this stage. <coughs> okay, so there's your patch coming around. And let's see, we're not going to need quite all of that. Mm. We're going to need to tuck the rest in. There's that ridge. And that's where it needs to come. So we can probably Oops. Do without this bit. Okay, I said so we've reached the tricuspid valve. So you see. Those things will come and come through the leaflet. I usually would pick up a pledget, make a little soft pledget from, uh, mm -hmm. from pericardium. Back just through the leaflet, not touching the myocardium at all. Mm -hmm. And back through the patch. And then you say that you have to just run along the tricuspid annulus. So obviously you put a little pledget, I think you do it with like a ribbon pledget, don't you, if you do this mm -hmm. with a continuous have a little ribbon of autologous pericardium or bovine to act as a pledget mm -hmm. as you come along the tricuspid valve. 
Which he was probably just there. Now we're back, now back into the ventricular side. I'm back on the ridge. Yeah, I've just got mm -hmm. I've just got the ridge left. Yeah, so we're mm -hmm. pretty well finished. Yeah. So we can just run it along. But I said, I don't think in these models it's really easy to try and do it through the. I mean, this would be. I think this is well. It's such a big VSD like this. It would be quite difficult to do it through the tricuspid valve, to be honest. Anyway, this plastic's a bit stiff there. Mm -hmm. so it, 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 it's certainly quite disorientating, tau sig being, and it's usually mm -hmm. perimembranous, so you've got to be cautious of the conduction. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that should commit your so once we get a bit further on we can look from above and look down through the pulmonary valve and look at the, the VSD mm -hmm. through there. So when you have an arch obstruction and you do the arch probe? We need to film it up, yeah. So, so what I've done, I've just transected my great vessels. So can you, you, you can see it there. Yeah? So I've transected my aorta and the pulmonary artery. So I was just going to have a look. Let's get my aorta out of the way. So if you look down the pulmonary artery, you can see the VSD patch. And you can see you've got a nice wide open way into the LV. Yeah? So you don't need to worry about having to enlarge the VSD because actually there's loads of plenty of room. And you can see your a nice view of your patch and your suture line, yeah? So you can all check your, happy with your VSD patches. Nice for you. So then here's your, your great vessels. So probably at this stage, you can probably still do some work before you do your arch. And then you just have to get your coronaries out. So you, it says, just like we've discussed in other switches, you, I usually start with a right coronary. And once you get down, that's okay. I can use these. Eh? So you're, you're absolutely hugging the bottom of the sinus to get mm -hmm. as big a button as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then come up this way. Like usual, switch. Yeah, so the mm -hmm. switch is standard, really. Mm -hmm. It's just you're aware that often in Tau Sig Bing, the um, the vessels, the, yeah, the cor you'd get unusual coronary patterns mm -hmm. sometimes in, in Tau Sig Bing. Mm -hmm. Again, once you get down below the top of the commissure, the button opens out for you usually. And again, here. Yeah, you can use pots or I usually use the tenosomies for this. Mm -hmm. Again, just let go there a second. I just look, check where your coronary is. Oh, okay, and as much button as you can. Okay, so <laughs> they can, they really are swinging free. So there you are, you've got your buttons off nicely. Then you want to, probably by this time you're about cold enough to stop and do your arch, as I thought. So you, we then need to, put, need to put our patch into the, to replace so my sequence would be I would probably put the patch in here next to re to repair the defects mm -hmm. in the old aorta. And again, be useful at this time. Now you've really got your best view down through the aorta. This is going to be the RVOT, remember. 
and in Tao Si Bing, sometimes this is a bit small. Sometimes there are muscle bundles under here. And you can even divide some muscle bundles. Have a good look now and make sure you're happy with the size of your RVOT. And in extreme cases, when it's really small, as long as there's no coronaries across the front, you can even do a transannular incision here across mm -hmm. the valve if it's really small. But usually you don't need to. But have a good look at this time. It's your best time to have a good look down through there. Yeah. And then we can put our patch in there. And then we can do the arch. Yeah. cut my little duct. Mm -hmm. So I say normally there might be a, um, a coarctation ridge to excise, but I open up the whole arch, yeah, so mm -hmm. right from where you've transected it across the site of the coarctation, resect the whole coarctation and join the back walls together, mm -hmm. which I'll cheat, I'll not do that now, but that means your patch can come all the way up to augment the aorta. Mm -hmm. <coughs> all the way up here so that you get it it makes this whole aorta bigger mm -hmm. so that your match between this and what's going to be your near aorta is much closer in size mm -hmm. instead of having a very small artery to match to a very big one because you've got to match it to this fella which is much bigger yeah okay yeah. that's going to come just come around around the arch up to here yeah, yeah.
A couple of differences there um, compared to regular transposition. The biggest difference is that your Perlman root is really big, right? Yeah. So that one. Okay, so uh, the first of all, when you come up to here, uh, don't forget the root count, right? <coughs> so it's the root count first. So, so when you when you finish the archery construction, that's a good time to do the count. Otherwise, you're gonna forget it. So it's done that. And <clears throat> okay, so this put my root. You can see one commissure um, until you. So we're gonna put a. Would you want? To oh, perfect. Okay, yeah, perfect. <coughs> So this is very favorable anatomy, can you see it? Just one second. So this is com anti commissure in the middle, right here. So that's actually pretty good because you can you can then uh, implant the one coronary on here, one coronary on there, right? So that's uh, that's the plan. Then uh, you're gonna go ahead and connect. So this is what I mean. So sometimes this uh, this tower aorta is too long, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have to cut it. So that's why that's why you don't want to commit to tie this mm -hmm. suture from from the beginning. And so I, I usually stop sort of um, you know two stitches from the mm -hmm. edge, mm -hmm. <coughs> two stitches from the edge, and then look at it and. Um, <coughs> If that's the, um, you know, if you had to ex extend the suture line, you just saw it when you, when you were uh, ready to connect. Okay, so this one, it's quite long, but let's say this is good size. But, um, you yeah, know, so this one's, um, you have a reverse problem there, right? So your patch is really wide, right? You actually are uh, bigger than the. <laughs> um, bigger than the primary root, but that's okay. I just I just stitched the patch that was there. Yeah, you're so excited for the patch. I that's just wanted to do it quickly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, you look at it. So, I usually um, leave the patch in a way that this this side root is still slightly smaller than this root, root. Mm -hmm. exactly like other switches, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then now I'll trim this. Yeah, and then I'm ready to sew. So, um, do you want six? Yeah, six sews. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> okay. So you can see this is this have a lots of risk of uh, very significant bleeding, right? Mm -hmm. Because you have. You know those two suture lines, and then now mm -hmm. you're adding the suture line. So make sure you, and you have to match up the size mismatch. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of uh, risk. So you just start from here, sort of um, this corner. You can also appreciate this is going to be a significant problem of uh, this corner. Right? See how long this is. Mm. Mm. This is this is a. Uh, Crazy oh. problem. Oh. You, anyway, let's deal with that one by one. So I usually match this to this corner so that mm -hmm. um, when I switch the suture and then do one uh, pair, then I can tie it. Mm -hmm. That's how I set up, but uh, it's up to you. Yeah. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Now they said, you know, you have, so before you start doing, you need to know which structure is actually bigger mm -hmm. or already matched, right? So in a neonate or small infant, what, what I usually do is that, so this structure is, I would say, bigger, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. This side, I would tell. Here, 
I usually stretch it, mm -hmm. right, and uh, put a stitch in. So that, so if you stretch, your um, distance is actually smaller than you think mm -hmm. when you detension. Mm -hmm. And then here I don't stretch and then put a stitch there. Mm -hmm. So in that way, naturally, just by the left hand you you matched it. Yeah, two to one, very easy. Mm -hmm. Just to Straight this structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, this one I don't stretch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then it's it's about you know uh, two to one ratio matching. Mm -hmm. Usually you have to do it reverse, right? So mm -hmm. usually proxima is bigger, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, usually proxima I don't stretch, and then uh, this one I stretch a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this side. That's very. Um, Simple and effective. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, so patch really doesn't uh, matter. So again, here, just look at this structure. So you you want to have a square byte, right? Mm -hmm. um, so look at your depths and uh, distance between the suture has mm -hmm. to be almost a uh, square, mm -hmm. right? So that's how you, um, and then I'm stretching here, no stretching here. Mm -hmm. So that's how you have a very consistent suture line. That's, okay, so, yeah. So there's a lot of um, mismatch. <laughs> Just give me Just a challenge. <laughs> okay. So the other thing is, you know, uh, in this pure posterior wall, you don't want to do too much making up, right? Mm -hmm. Not more than two to one ratio. But when you got a side wall, especially on your side, mm -hmm. a little easier to fix with a repair yes. stitch. Mm -hmm. So I'm more aggressive now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> But a pure posterior, especially in this corner, it's very uh, difficult to see, right? It's um, right. it's far away from your view. Mm -hmm. okay, so now I'm advancing quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now I'm trying to tie this one. Yeah. So here is... <coughs> Because this patch and then uh, two structure, like three structure, meets together, it tends to bleed. So I recently started putting a sort of mattress stitch just uh, just for the hemostasis. It seems mm -hmm. to be very effective. <coughs> you know, Dr. Sano used to do that all the time. I don't know whether he's doing it now or not. Okay, I'll cut this. There we go. <coughs> And um, so just a small tip, if you're using exactly the same suture, like 7 no regular, mm -hmm. so here is a good time to switch to the longer one, right? Mm -hmm. So pay attention to that because you have a longer suture line. Okay, so when you get to this point, let's casually relax this, right? Because you want to know where this one is coming. Pick us, please. Here? Yeah? All right, so that's the right corner. Mm -hmm. Looks this one wanna come here, right? Uh, potentially your top part may cross the suture line, mm -hmm. or you can be uh, right at the suture line, and uh, mm -hmm. it's about here. Mm -hmm. So I will just go one more, and then stop. <clears throat> Yeah, when you saw half of the aorta, it's, it's almost, oops, <laughs> cameras, okay, that's good. <clears throat> and this, um, where I got it here, and this prediction of where this corner is going to be located, yeah. you, you will get better, like, case by case, like, you know, every case you get better, just need to, Okay, yeah, and then I'm just going to go patch 
Sometimes we get Parchin and uh, Aota together. Mm -hmm. This just eliminate the gap. Tie this. Yeah. So choose the uh, longer one to stay. There we go. Okay. And uh, based on the um, length of the left corner, you know it's going to be a problem. So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. So okay, I'm I'm stretching here, and then here no stretching, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And neonatal tissue is very flexible, so. Mm -hmm. Um, you also have to pay attention to uh, your assistant in you know, how much attention. assistant putting attention. Right, my, my suggestion always that put an mm -hmm. assistant putting the same attention to the surgeon's left hand mm -hmm. so that there's no distortion, right? Okay, here. Mm -hmm. um, so let's have a look here. <coughs> so let's analyze this one. So this one have a very long left domain. And then a quite dominant circ and an LAD. Mm -hmm. And this one for sure it's gonna come. Yeah, this one's almost impossible, but they will come here. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And um, also tells you that left domain is very long, so you don't need to worry about circ kinking, mm -hmm. right? It won't happen. So you just have to go straight. Mm -hmm. And uh, you may want to tilt a little bit, just mm -hmm. a little bit like yeah. that. So you're almost at the um, you're almost at the aortic yeah, arch because mm -hmm. you see that it's, it's not going to happen here, right? Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen mm -hmm. here. It's going to be here. So you're almost entirely mm -hmm. um, above it, but you may be able to use this um, incision as a inferior yeah inferior trapdoor, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why. So we're going to go here. One more stitch. In rare cases, do you usually go uh, this uh, put this uh, left corner like higher than the? It's very rare. Mm -hmm. But it happens. That's why. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly why I always uh, can it the arch mm -hmm. in, the, in the beginning. Be <coughs> okay. What would you do if you cannulate too low? You have to recan it, which is not bad. So you just have to. So you have to make a quick decision mm -hmm. that way. <coughs> well, as I said, I, I um, start sort of a routine recan at the mid arch, so that's you know mm -hmm. avoid most of the problem. So you just develop from experience. Yeah, because I had to move. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is second stitch, right? So just um, so you have to know that you know you, you should be able to cut in between, right? So a little bit of a gap in between, mm -hmm. and certainly not cross leg. Don't don't go oblique, mm -hmm. right? So um, you still have a risk of cutting one of the sutures, which <coughs> doesn't mm -hmm. save you a lot of time if you do it, right? Mm -hmm. So now, um, so this is very standard. Just go quickly. So I'm just going to go really wide, just for a matter of time. Don't go this wide, it's going to be a massive bleeding. So <laughs> <laughs> you were blended with Norway yeah, last yeah. week. Yeah? <laughs> There's like centimeters between this bite. <laughs> uh, <when> we get <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. So and then here, so this is what I usually do. So when you have this small structure, and your suture line is going down, mm -hmm. not going up. Yeah. Uh, I find that sometimes backhand is very uh, mm -hmm. uh, good too, because you, you still get the perpendicular bite. Mm -hmm. OK, so that's good. OK, now to pretend that you know, we, we take a cross clamp off, the uh, root is failed. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of things. So make sure this is not on tension. Right? And then your assistants kind of pull up like that. Okay. 
now so this one is easy so it's um, almost um, one way yeah I usually do a left and uh, okay so something like this so just one second this is this is tricky right eh? okay but mm -hmm. that's okay, you can go either way but this one doesn't want to go lateral because lateral means you have more uh, angle mm -hmm. so it has to be something like okay. this and uh, I would say here yeah. Mm. yeah that's looks reasonable mm. and then uh, this side I think this side something like this right yeah and uh, so make sure so this what's a cross technique right it's very important that you have a rectangle button mm -hmm. right so that's a good setup to have then you, you can match this corner rectangle mm -hmm. to this right so it's more accurate mm way of cutting it and then this is straight up so and then you match that mm -hmm. direction and then you cut it right so you have a commissure here so it should be okay mm -hmm. but obviously you wanna when you cut it you wanna cut sort of a mm -hmm. this way right rather than this way mm -hmm. and make sure you you have an aortic uh, cross clamp off because yes. that gives you a blood coming in so that your valve is closed. Right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's really dangerous maneuver. Okay, and then do this. So this one, I, I want to slightly tilt, tilt mm -hmm. medially. Mm -hmm. And this is a good way. So see, I'm tilting a little bit. Yeah. Okay, now it's cross cut. Mm -hmm. Okay, like that. <coughs> and okay, so I'll just go a little bit more. Okay, and then here is the most important point. So you see this vertical incision is tilted, right? Mm -hmm. But if a trap door here mm -hmm. and here is not tilted, you're not you're not gonna tilt the coronaries. So it has to be ninety degree from here to there. So you're mm -hmm. aiming this way, mm -hmm. not this way. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this trap door mm -hmm. has to be about 80% of this circumference, uh, mm -hmm. this uh, length, so that mm -hmm. um, sort of, um, you know, this one doesn't flat, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. kind of goes like a oh. little bit like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, this one also. Your um, mm -hmm. your aiming little inferior, right? Mm -hmm. The ninety degree to the original. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, top door. Mm -hmm. Top can be a little shorter than the bottom, right? Based on your oh, button. Mm -hmm. Set at the corner. Here and uh, one bite. So when it put here, I'm not gonna okay. take it out and then uh, pass this. See how you can let go with the coin and match the corner, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And um, so I usually saw the bottom part. It usually takes about five, uh, five, six bites. And uh, make sure you're advancing. So same idea. You're advancing more on the coronary mm -hmm. button mm -hmm. compared to yeah, perpendicular bite. And uh, yeah. Again, you can stretch it, right? Yeah, I think this one's easier to uh, conceptualize. Mm. Can you appreciate more? 
Wait. And perpendicular byte. So make sure you got four three layers. Mm -hmm. And again, come back here. Okay, just one second. Just trying to. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So now about halfway, so we had to squeeze everything in. So I have probably three more stitches to get the corner. And this is a corner, so I'm not advancing on the, on the aorta. But the way to be, okay, we actually got the corner here. So corner. And uh, uh, I make sure 100% this corner matches to this corner, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's important because that will um, fix your corner to the tilt that you created, mm -hmm. right? And uh, the rest of it is just so, um, oops, spins. <coughs> okay. Okay, so that's the five stitches on the bottom. So as I said, five, six stitches. So if you think of coronary, uh, sorry, the cabbage anastomosis, you're only taking like 12 to 15 bytes, right? So it's the same thing. So the message is that you don't want to take too many bytes. Uh, okay, so that one's there. And this one's here. Okay. Okay, let go. Okay, so now, so when I when I finish the base, I usually come out. Yeah, and then uh, really <coughs> start sewing from the right shoulder. So I'm standing on the uh, almost like a top of the patient, mm -hmm. right side, and then uh, this is sort of a. Uh, and in here, you may want to two bite it because you, you do need to see the uh, orifice. Mm -hmm. So this, you know, about two, three bites is you're very close to the orifice. You're mm -hmm. running um, just next to it, right? So you, you until you pass the orifice, you don't want to guess, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, here, because it's a trap door, you can start advancing a lot on the aortic side. Yeah. So you see the orifice and then the kind of feed it in. Yeah. So if you're feeding you can do one bite just mm -hmm. like this. But I would say that you know the right. next stitch from the bottom, um, I usually do two bite to make sure I'm not I'm not uh, too close to the coronary orifice. Mm -hmm. And then once you define the suture line then you don't need to be um okay. that cautious. Now advancing a lot because you know I, I passed the orifice. Okay. okay. And then this top corner, let me just go just one by. Here. Here we go. Okay, and then uh, do the rest. Mm 